Brett, welcome back uh, to Hitch in Town. This must have been a really tough decision to leave Stockfold, but why did you choose to take over at top field as the new manager? Uh, yeah, massively, massively tough. Uh, Burke has been in charge for 11 years, so if I didn't take it now, a new guy comes in and stays another 11 years, I'm probably going to be done by then or not going to be in the consideration of the job. So the fact I was considered, first and foremost, was that's pleasing. Um, yeah, it was a lot harder leaving than I thought. I mean, the timing's not great. I'd made, I made it quite clear that to leave would be a massive wrench because work really hard down there as with all the other lads down at Stockfold and we've built a really good environment and a really good two really good sides in the devs in the first team so and I've probably the last couple of months the first team I've been happy with what we've got so Saturday with a great result against Siren Sester and the playoffs are in sight and I think we've got a running where we can we could have we could have pushed for the playoffs and maybe got into them but Sadly, the for Stockfold, the pull of coming to your hometown club, a club I hold dear to my heart, mm. uh, probably a little bit too too much to resist. And a few people I spoke to said, look, how is, how, when these opportunities come along, established step three side, uh, my team, it's a, it's a, it's a hard one to, to not say yes to. So, yeah, I've got a lot of work on my hands. I'd have rather it been May and we were quite comfortably, comfortably not relegated. But, yeah, but listen, the club's in a good place. Kitchen's a, Kitchen's a well-run club and they said they've just had an unbelievably bad run of results. So, can't keep losing. Hmm. There's always been talk that, you know, it's going to be a natural succession, that you are going to return as manager at some point, uh, you know, potentially following Mark Burke, as you said, potentially a few managers down the line. This must be earlier than you envisaged it because, you know, a lot of people at Topfield just feel like Berkey's going to be there forever and it's a very strange time at the moment. But you cannot have imagined, even when you were finishing your playing days, that you'd be a manager back at Hitchin Town, managing a step-free club this soon into your managerial career. Uh, well, maybe not Hitchin. I'm a plan, the, the plan at Stockfield was to get us to step-free foot. I've uh, got step four in two years. So mm. if it wasn't going to be a Hitchin... I'd have tried my best to do it with Stockfold. Berkey, knowing Berkey like I do, I think it's fair to say it's been tough the last couple of years. Um, he's he's had he's had he's had he's had success in certain areas. Obviously, start of this season they were unbelievable, and they were in the playoffs at Christmas. And so you think he's found another side. And I think you speak to him a lot, Freddie. You've 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 seen what sort of pressure he puts on himself, and it's, I'd have said it's affected him probably a lot more the last month than it ever has so obviously Berkey going which is he's, he's, I think he's earned the right to leave I mean if he's not enjoying it and, it's, and if, you, if you feel it's getting to you you can't let you can't it affect your health so before he does that he's made the right decision um, I said I said to to Berkey when he said when he said he'd gone he said look you should go for the job there's, believe me there's been no oh Berkey said this you've got to go and do it or Berkey's been into the years of the committee they, they, I've had to, I've had to work hard to, to on my reputation as a manager to get mm. to get an interview. So I said to him when I met him, I don't want to be, I don't want it to be a favour. Oh, look, Donners has been here, he's done this, he's done that, his family's always been in around the club. No, I don't want it to be that a case of that. It's got to be a case of actually, Brett might know what he's talking about. He might better set up a team. And I like to think I've proven that over the last three years because I've had, I've had, I've had success that some managers will never have in their whole careers. So. Two promotions, mm. cup finals, and yeah, and that side of it, I think, I think probably, yeah, I, I've earned the right to be in a conversation. Were there better candidates than me out there for this job? I don't know. Mm. You tell me, Freddie. I think, um, I think they put they may have been on paper in terms of what they've done at step three and levels above, but I can assure everyone that mm. no one who's gone for that job this time around will want the club to do as well as I do and have that have the club at their have the club actually the best interest of the club at heart because that's that's what I want. I don't, it's not about Brett Donnelly. It's not about whoever else. It's about what can we do for Hitchin as a club and how can we make them better than mm. what the, where they are where they are now. And I think Burke is left in a great position. Obviously, wish he had ten more points, but he hasn't. It's rare that you stay quiet on social media, but you have played down sort of any talk and tweets. You know that maybe. 
you know, egging you on, if you like, to take the job. But you must have had quite a lot of messages, you know, since Berkey resigned, maybe encouraging you. Who, who have you sort of spoken to and and how how has the, your decision making changed sort of the second you heard about the resignation? What was your feeling then and what's your feeling now? Uh, first and foremost, was like, like same as everyone else, but Jesus, like, Berks is gone. What's, yeah, it's like the Queen dying, isn't it? Um, <laughs> what happens? Do I, what happens now? And yeah, obviously, obviously, since that, since that, I think we read Bedford that night. And since that Tuesday, it was, yeah, the phone's not stopped. And that's a really nice message from people. Mm. Um, and um, I spoke to a lot of managers locally, long way away. And the, the problem was everyone assumed that it would be, oh, Brett's going to get it. Well, it's not as simple as that. There's other people out there that want the job with people that, like I said, might be better placed than me. But to speak, the ones I spoke to in terms of, what what should I do? Should I take it? Should I not take it? The club's in a bit of a perilous position. We're not quite there, but we're not quite. We're not. We're not in a relegation zone. So, yeah. What I might be the guy that takes his chin down. Listen, if we get relegated, then I've got to take it on the chin. Mm. I don't want us to get relegated, but all what I do know is the next season, when I've got a free run at it, things will be better. So, at the moment, my whole my concentration is right. Let's get. Let's get the five, six, seven, eight points we need to stay up, which I think we need. Then let's concentrate on next season. But I spoke to loads of people about it. Like I said, social media, I won't get drawn in on it because egg on your face. And I've made, I've made, I've made no bones about it. This is the job. I'm, there's only I, I said to my chairman, uh, it's not fault. It's only two jobs really that I'd have left for, and this would be the number one. So yeah, they. Uh, Ignore. I, I I try ignore. I, I ignore social media as much as I can. If I can wind people up on it, I like I like to do that. But I've had to try and keep quiet for the last week or so. And that interview process, like you said, it wasn't a case of Mark just going, you know, Brett's going to take the job because the the application was put out there. There was genuinely no immediate successor and there was an interview process. Some really strong candidates, as you'd imagine, a club like Hitch and Stature. Who approached who though? Did you go to the club? Did the club go to oh, you? Well, how did you sell you? Well, Berkey, I, I, was, I was like, well, surely the club won't. In my, in my eyes, if anyone wants you, they should come and speak to you. But then Berkey's like, no, look, make sure you just sell them you're interested because they're not going to know. If you, you've got a good job where you are, you're doing well, they're not going to know. So yeah, I, did, I made the club know that I'd, I'd be interested, as did, I think there was 40, 50 candidates. So there's some good candidates. In terms of that the club did, I said about a week of to and fro and I think there was some other candidates that were they were very interested in and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it ends up with me getting the job, which is going to be brilliant for some people. It's going to be a big, big pain in the ass for some other people because I'm well aware Marmite, some mm. people are not going to like how I am. And you know me, Fred, I don't really care what people think. Judge me on what I do. Don't If you don't know me, don't judge me. I will be. I will give everything to making that club a better club, to making the team a success. But I'm going to do it my way. Don't the people can't be assuming I'm going to be Baby Burks because you know us both, Fred. We're very, very different. Mm. And um, you know, when you talk about people and their opinions of you, do you mean fans or do you mean players? Uh, you know, at the same time, because <laughs> players are going to who maybe haven't worked under you before. Um, obviously, some some of them did when you were, were coaching at Hitch in Town. What do you think their perception of you is going to be? Oh, I, I, I'm fully accepted of ever to think I'm a big bully, which uh, I am not. Uh, funnily enough, I yeah, I, I do growl, I do bark, I do shout, and mm. if you're not doing what I ask, then you're going to get told. And but on the flip side of that, if you're doing what I ask and you and you turn up and you give everything you've got, I've got a lot of time for it. Well, the biggest pat on the back I can give me and what I've, we've done at Stockfold in terms of players not many people leave not many we don't lose many players because if I was that bad of a person or that bad of a manager they'd all be jumping ship we'd mm -hmm. manage to keep a good core of players that have signed up for what we'd want to do and that's what I plan to do with Hitchin get the, get the right people in the manager if you're going to if you're going to sulk because you're not playing or you're going to sulk because I told you off I'm sorry it's men's football you're getting paid some decent money to be there you got to take it on a chin. You want to take. You want to reap the rewards. You got to take. You got to take the the uh, the backhand as you're going to get. Listen, I don't go around gripping people up and throwing them around. I'll just be straight and honest and 
I wear my heart on my sleeve and you've got to take that to play on my side. And if you're not going to run for a brick wall for, for, for me or the club, then you'll be, you'll be finding yourself a new club very short. So, so, and as for the fans, they know what I'm like. There's, mm. there's, a, there's a, I'd say there's a good few of them that I made to turn in my last spell at Hitchin. They thought I was rubbish. I weren't, I weren't rubbish. I weren't great. I managed to turn them into, actually, Brett's not too bad. Some of them aren't going to like how it's just it's, 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 it's human nature. I can't be everyone's cup of tea. So, and obviously, following Mark, following Berkey, he is a very, very nice man, isn't he? Mm. And uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not the, I'm not the ogre of the demon everyone thinks I am, but at the same time, if I've got something to say, I will say it. I think as well, looking at Stockfold, and you know, I'm not there every week, but I've watched enough of them to see just how many young players come to you and are trusted to come and play for Stockfold. And of course, that's been a real feature at Hitch in the last few years as well. Do you feel that sort of, not calmed you down, but you know what I'm trying to say in terms of working with young players, you can't be flying in like a ball in the china shop now. <laughs> sort no, of you're right. Your approach, don't you? And, and you must have learned a lot, even in just a couple of years at Stockford, you must have felt you've developed quite a lot in terms of how you manage people. I would say that um, since I probably left Bigger's Way to come to Hitchin when I was 30, 31, I came into a dress room that was full of kids. Just I think there's just Callum there that was over a certain age. And from that point, I realised that there's ways and means of dealing with certain players, certain people. It's just like life. You can't you can't treat everyone as a as a dog. You might have some fish, you might have some cats, you might have a lion. I'd like some lions, if I'm honest, but if you, I, I really could do without any squirrels. Um, I, you need to adapt to, to work with certain people. You need to make sure that, right, can I? I've got a lad, Callum Kane. Callum Kane played fishing. And you can't get stuck into CK. To CK, it'll it'll melt. However, at some point CK needs to be told. He'll get told, and you you've got LB. I will never say you as long as LB plays Hitchin and plays for me. I will never say nothing nice about LB because he's a terrible footballer, a terrible human being. But you know what? He'll stick his head in everywhere. He'll run around everywhere. He'll kick everything. It's exactly what a team needs. But I can't tell him he's any good because. He'll, he'll, he'll get an inflated ego and he'll turn out a load of tosh so uh, if you're watching LB you are still very poor at football and you're going to be very poor at football for me for a long time I think. <laughs> but yeah you have to, with the young lads I've loved having young lads around because you don't, you do, you don't really realise that they are a sponge they take on board so much more not as much as you'd hope but if you tell them most of them one thing and they're new to the dressing room they will do as they are, do as they're told. So with, when they get to a certain age, they know how to play the game. They will do what they want. Mm. So, yeah. Look, the million, dollar, the million dollar question, you know, essentially to any manager going through this job is how do you end this losing run? And, you know, it's something that Mark Burke, obviously, after so many years at Hitchin, it seems sort of typical Hitchin that every season is perhaps marred by one or two bad runs of form that maybe delay what could be a really good playoff chasing season into what ends up in a mid-table season. And obviously that's more of a long-term thing that you'll want to look at. But what are the first things that you're going to look to change just in the next couple of weeks? Next couple of weeks are going to be hard, if I'm honest. I've said this to this. <laughs> if you change too much now, we're going to be starting from scratch. You can't be doing that. You Everyone, it's the easy cop out. Oh, I'm going to make them fit. I know he's be fit. They should be fit. It's March. It's end of March. They should be fit. We may change formation. We'll get some. We'll get. We will get some more bodies in. But that's what I've been doing today. Mm. Trying to get some more bodies in. Some men in. We need. It's a very young squad. I think you take Gleese out of it. Take LB out of it. We're very very young. So we need to get some men in. We need to also look at right. What's been going wrong? Why have we been losing games of football? Well, from what I've been told, it's just errors individual errors it's not a lack of trying is it a lack of quality maybe not scoring enough goals is a massive problem because you're always on the back foot if you're not gonna if you can't go one nil up you can't go two nil up if you can see this it's, it's, it's demoralizing so we've got to get some goals in the side where do i get goals in the side on, on march the 20th with a team a place above the relegation it's tough mm. so we've got to work on what we've got we've got to make them believe that they're they decide side that was playing Hitchin three, four months ago that got was in the playoffs. Gets, give him some confidence, tinker with a few things. Like I said, Berkey said it himself. Had they got used to that voice, had they given up with that, that one voice, they probably had. 
the new voice, someone a little bit more up and at them. They've got no, they've got no hiding place. We've got, we've got to go with that side of it. We get, we get some, we get some new bodies in. We, we get stuck into a little bit. We work on different things. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Mm. So we've got to change it. Things have to change. We can't expect that. Can't expect to just turn up, play the same team, and hope it works out. Because I'm shouting at him, that's not going to work. Did Mark say anything to you in terms of these are, you know, these are the issues that you want to have a look at? Have you talked to him about really the footballing side of things? No, nah, no, nah, I think he just he left me to left it to myself to work out. I mean, I spoke to Jonesy. Jonesy's going to stick around, which is good for me. I like I've got a lot of time for, for Michael. Um, in terms of Burks, I think. Yeah, he's trying to stay, try to stay out of that, well out of it as possible. Because listen, it's hard because I've got to basically dismantle, or not dismantle, but I've got to basically rip up what he's done and start again in terms of in terms of his team. So that's basically me saying, Burks, you've not the job you've done hasn't been good enough, and that's that's harsh, isn't it? He's, mm. th- that team was good enough at the start of the season. What's happened since Christmas? We don't know, but I can, I'm pretty sure it's a lot to do with confidence. I would. Berkey just basically said, "Look, he's going to. He's not getting involved in any of it. We might see him end of the season, which is fine." The whole. I've had a few questions. Oh, you know, how are you going to get on with him? How are you going to? How are you going to take on the eleven? Taking this job after eleven years of Burks? Well, doesn't doesn't really bother me. Doesn't phase me the fact that Burke has been here for eleven years. And he's done well. That doesn't bother me one bit. I'll come in. It's a new job. It's a different person. People have to get used to that very quickly, and mm-hmm. they're going to, have to get used to a different way of. Of the, of the Fitch and Town Football Club. That's just that's 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 the that's the end of the matter, really. So, yeah, it's going to be different. Burks has uh, Burks has left the job. We've got a, we've got to draw a line in it. He's done a great job for eleven years. I played for him for a good few of them years, and I enjoyed my football with him. Now it's time for for us to me to sort this sort this out and make sure we're a step three club next season because that's all we that's all we want. In terms of this player recruitment, then I'm sure you won't be looking to just go and rob from Stockfold because you've got far too much respect for them, and you know we're not going to see something like that happen. But what are we expecting to see in terms of the caliber of players, and of, could there be any departures as well? Because that can often be part and parcel when a manager does move on. Uh, departures, I can't, I can't comment. I'm, I'm, I'm in some more. I'm in Thursday training. We'll have a look. They've got, I think they've got 19, 20 players. So, listen, they're not all going to be in a squad come Saturday anyway. If we get players in, sadly, players are going to have to go. And it's not a case of, well, what can we do to help them out? It's, it's, this, stage, it's this stage of the season. We've got a week left to the transfer windows, so to speak. We can only sign players up to next Friday. We've got to get, we've got to get some in. I've been making phone calls today. I'm pretty confident on two, maybe three. We can't go make wholesale changes. We can't be going to get seven eight players. In. Sorry, we can't get seven eight players in because what's that? What we're gaining from that? We've got to get seven eight new individuals. We've got to build a team. We haven't mm-hmm. got time for that. Them boys that have got themselves in this mess have got to get themselves out of it with a little bit of help from two or three others. So there's enough good players in that squad. They just need they just need a little bit a different bit of guidance and a couple of couple of uh, blokes ch- chucked in to help them out and. That's what we've got to do. We've just got to work hard now for the next five, six weeks. And your captain, of course, Charlie Horlock at the moment, um, remaining from Mark Burke. He is the man, you know, wearing the armband. How important will he be as a voice sort of off the pitch as well as on it? Yeah, Chaz is, uh, obviously, I've played with Chaz and just the sort of bloke you, you want in this situation, really. He's a calm, he's cool, calm head. And I imagine he's as frustrated as anybody. I spoke to Chaz last week and, um, yeah, he's, he scratches his head as to why he goes. He just said it's individual errors from from everyone. He said it's just absolutely killing him. That's that's what happens. Charlie, for he he gets a great viewpoint from where he is, but at the same time, he's got we got we got to get Charlie to worry about Charlie. Don't worry about everybody else. Let everyone else on the pitch worry about their positions. Worry about their jobs. You worry about being the best goalkeeper you can. And listen, there's not you you've seen enough games, Freddie. There's not many better goalkeepers than Charlie Horlock in this league. So. Mm. Give him, giving him, giving him protection he needs. He'll wait. Where was that? Where was the game when he scored? And was it Hell's Own away? Yeah. Not many yeah. people were going to do that in the season. So that's 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 what he did. Captain wise, I imagine I've not seen him as captain. Obviously, I'd imagine he's very much like Webby, Dan Webb, uh, 
<laughs> Dan Webb, it just sounds weird, Dave Webb. <laughs> um, yeah, just I imagine he's one of them. Lee's was like, he's, he's, a, he's a consummate pro, Chaz. Everything, if you if, if you deviate from his routine, it sends him do lally. So he, for everyone to look around, he's your captain. That's what you want. Mm. But is it is it is it easy for him to get his message across for ninety minutes? I don't know. So we're going to talk about. But he's a he's all he's he's as upset as anybody as a position they find themselves in. So he'll be wanting to right a few wrongs and. Chaz is, a, Chaz is a dream for me to come into. Mm. He, you couldn't ask for anyone better to, for, to be captain at the moment. So I'll be having a big chat with him next couple of days and seeing, getting his perspective on what thing, where things are going wrong. So I'm um, listen, it's not a dictatorship. I'll be talking to all of them. Where can we get better? How can we make ourselves better? So Chaz is massively important for me. Obviously, a lot of areas to develop on, but when you look at that back five, you've worked with most of them before, the likes of Syme, Jones, you know, mm. even Lane Eady, Brad Bell, Lewis Barker. That must be really important in terms of when you're building the spine of the team to have that experience back there. That, that's got that's got to be crucial to build on. Well, yeah, they're not, they're not, not conceding. I mean, even Saturday, 3-0 was, was harsh, wasn't it? It was 1-0 yeah. one, one in the 92nd minute. So it's not like, again, again a hiding. They... <laughs> Sadly, something's still not right because they're not winning games. I get it, they need to score more goals, but how many nil nils have we had? Not enough to concede in most weeks. That's 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 the well, no clean sheet since December. It's a problem. And if I don't care if it's one or two, you need to start giving clean sheets, you need to start get rid of the individual individual errors. And it you can't just bang that back five. It has to come from your first line defence, which is your, your centre forward. So the back five will be important. Will we go with back five continuing continuing on? Don't know. But this is something we're going to be looking at tomorrow at training and we're going to find the listen, we've got things have to change, Freddie. You can't keep that listen, has Toby done well this season? Yeah, yes. Has Kieran. Kieran's been in and out injured. Is Brad Bell a right back? Well, that's the same guys for me, I don't know if he is. I'd I like to see him further forward. He'll get you a goal. Yeah. So Laney, is he a wing back? I don't know. I don't for me, is he, I don't think he's fit enough. So we have to look at that. Is he a left back? Yeah, he probably is. Loads of things for me to look at. Loads of me to talk about. We've got, I've got three days. Well, I've got two days to, to get it sorted for Saturday before Telford rolling. We've got to make it as hard and as horrible as we can. We don't want it. We can't, we can't play open, expansive football against Telford. Mm. We've got to make it a game where it's blood, thunder, war. Let's make it horrible for them. And there's probably, probably, there'll probably be some fans thinking, oh, God's sake, Donald's is back. I don't really care if it's going to be a horrible game. We need to not lose. Mm. Simple as that. We cannot keep losing games of football. And we've got to do it by hook or by crook. So if I've got to play a back seven, we'll play a back seven on Saturday. Let's throw one man up top and hopefully gets hold of it. But mm. first and foremost, let's not lose a game of football. Let's stop, let's stop this acceptance of, was it 12 games now? Yeah. It was a nil-nil draw away to Telford uh, actually earlier this season. It's uh, certainly one of the one of the examples, isn't it, when you go to a place like Telford of just how strong this league is. I mean, even going to Leamington on Saturday, last time before that we went there, we all know what the score was. You were a part of that team in that playoff final. And the league only got more difficult. I mean, you've watched from the from the outside, yeah. haven't you? But you'll have seen it at step four as well, the high quality yeah. of that league, step five. You know, are Hitchin punching above their weight? Are they where they should be, or, or should they be <laughs> far higher in that league? It's it's an ongoing debate almost between fans. Where where how big is Hitchin as a club? I guess exactly what exactly the point I made when I spoke to the committee about taking the job. For me, Hitchin should be competing with St Albans, with Hemel. They shouldn't. They should. It's a big club. It's a well-established club, and I get that. The Broms Groves, the Hales Owens, they're all the same. Hitchin, Hitchin are where they need to be at the moment. They've got to be looking to push on. Are Hitchin any worse than St Albans? Well, no. It's the same sort of affluent area we live in. Why can't we look at St Albans and go, actually, let's, let's, let's be a good step two club. Why can't we go and get promoted? That's what I want to do. I want, I want the club to be looking at, the, at that end of the table. I don't want to be looking down the bottom. We shouldn't be... Listen, so need a market. What's that? Village? Yeah. Jesus. Mm. They've got they've got a top side down there, they've, and they've had a few years of in and out, flirting with relegation. Just going to show you, just get you have, all you need to get a good side together, get everyone believing, get the town believing, 
Hitchin wants a good football side. The, the, the crowds have gone. I, I can't believe the crowds that are coming this year. Yeah. 600, 700, 800. Just, it's unbelievable. Listen, to keep them, people keep coming back. We need to have a good side. We need to keep start entertaining them. Entertain them. I don't want any entertainment for a couple of weeks. I just want boring out, winning games or drawing games. I don't want it. If that means we can just bore out games, gladly take that. Long term, I want, to, I want us to play attacking football. I want to try and get two men up front. I want us to try and flood teams. I've, I've, it's taken me probably till Christmas this year with Stockpile to find that balance. And since then, we've been actually we, we, we're quite a, we're quite a well we're quite a good side going forward. So we, we, let's make ourselves hard to beat. Let's let's have a proper go. I want to be able to, I want to be able to be the head of a team that a hitching side that is going to be as high as they ever can be. My dad played Hitchin a long time ago. He had a choice between Hitchin or Stevenage Borough to go and sign for. He signed for Hitchin because they were the better side and they were in a higher league. Hmm. That may have been 35 years ago. However, what stops? Why can't we get to the levels that Stevenage are at? That's what we've got to be looking at. And to be fair, they've got there's a there's a vision behind the scenes now that yeah, actually we want to they want to be pushing that way. And I know Burke has been trying to push for it for years. So hmm. we are. Um, that's what I want to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to be competing in, in this league. So. I want, to be, I want to be pushing higher and higher. As you said, the attendances at top field have been great and you want to you know, make a side that's going to be hard to beat at home and look, the home record has been nowhere near what it should be this season. We all know that. But you know, you mentioned Hell Zone and when you go there, you know you're up against it. The players get up for it. We, we talk about making top field a fortress, but <laughs> it, can't, it can't be an intimidating place to go with all due respect, can it? Is that something you'd like to change? You know, a bit more of that? Yeah. Act? Yeah, making it a little yeah. bit more ugly almost yeah, it's, than a lovely it's, 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 a ni- it's a nice friendly place isn't it this is um, it's a nice friendly town Fred you live here I live yeah. here it's it's, uh, it's very quaint it's very nice and um, yeah I, I, it is listen the fact that there's still 600 going and you lost 12 in a row mm. says a lot I want them to listen if you're disgruntled let's be disgruntled if you've got something to say let the players know if they're not performing I was listening when I was there. I was I was told in no uncertain terms on a few occasions that I wasn't performing. I wasn't good enough. I've got no problem with that. We need to be a little bit more. I like to hear a little bit. I like the fans to be a little bit more vocal. I like to hear some chanting. I like the kids to get involved. Like you, listen, you come up as a as a teenager, yeah. and I'd like I, I like we you know you see on Twitter they got the like the, the late and ultras and all that. Listen, we don't want to get stupid, but I'd like to see some sort of some sort of element of like actually. These kids are enjoying their like, non-league football. Let's mm. make it a little bit hard for teams to come down. These teams from Burnham don't get intimidated coming down to come down to Hitchin. But also, we're, we're a nice side. I mm. think we, the last time we weren't nice was when probably when me and Cal were playing. Mm. So we need we do that's that's something I've got to look at. Lovely footballers, we love all that. However, don't have to be horrible and going two foot in people, but let's make sure that they know they're coming for a game. And the fans can start giving the opposition some stick because, yeah, it's not we're not we're not we're not all vegan warriors, are we? We are we're doing like a little bit of blood and thunder, Fred. Absolutely, is something you'll be looking to bring in. And just before we wrap up, I need to touch on your sort of coaching staff because obviously you've done really well in terms of who you who you recruited. You know, at Stopfold, who are you looking to have with you in the dugout come Saturday? Uh, we're gonna Eddie Eddie Max gonna come down with me. Um, this, Eddie's, Eddie's a top coach A for B um, knows his stuff knows how I work Jonesy's going to stick around got a lot of time for Jonesy he's another one A for A for A for B he, and he knows his club he knows what the squad's like that's perfect for me because I need that um, for the time being that's going to be it because I don't want to uh, my cousin Paul's going to stay at Stockfold he's going to run keep the ship there like, so we don't the continuity for there I don't want to upset mm. That, that side of it any more than I have done. I mean, me going is, listen, I don't think it's a be all and end all. We've got a good side down there. Cal and Paul and Ryan Frank are going to run things over that side. So, for the time being, I mean, Sam, I spoke to Sam, she's going to stay. Everything's going to be pretty much the same off the field in terms of um, personnel. Dell's still there from what I'm told. He's mm-hmm. not dead yet, which is good news. Um, yeah, so that side of it for the time, at the end of the season, coming into the season, would it be changes? Well, we'll see how we all get on for the last six weeks. But yeah, I, I do like doing things my way, and I'm a little bit funny when things aren't done my way. And um, if people don't get into line, then 
they're gonna they're gonna know pretty quick because yeah i am a very odd creature when it comes to things being done if things aren't done how i like them then i'm yeah it does wind me up so eddie knows how i work jones knows how i work and um sam's i've got well, sam was physio when i was there so that in terms of off the field we are in a position where there's enough bodies there to help me out and it's now down to me and ed to bring new ideas in and a new a new a new bit of vigor a new bit of swing to what we what, how we want to do things and it's proven listen i'm a firm believer stick with what you know mm. and i can't i couldn't have brought eddie m paul and the, and the goalkeeper coach and the physio because it just wasn't it's not feasible stop folders that very well run club they've looked after me and i'm not gonna like you said i'm not gonna i'm not that sort of person where it's gonna go and swipe everything and pull the rug from them so yeah we'll, we'll be all right with what we've got and just finally, look, Saturday, top field, non-league day, big crowd, Telford coming down. You must be really excited to come back, not only to see everyone, but to be back in the dugout. How are you feeling and how do you think the fans are feeling that now they've seen that you're going to be taking them on? Because like you say, you're, you're Marmite, but Hitchin fans, have they've proven they've stuck with the club through thick and thin. And there's going to be a lot who are looking forward to buying you a drink on Saturday, potentially. So if anyone... <laughs> well, they could buy me a drink, that'd be nice. Um... Yeah, I'm, well, I'm looking forward to it because it'd be nice to go back. I'm looking forward to playing Telford in front of about a thousand people. I'll tell you, I know more Thursday night after training where mm. we're at because, yeah, I've got I've got to pick a team up from well, they're part, well past rock bottom, aren't they? They're they're, they're out of their asses, bless them. So we've got to we've got to find a way of right. Let's get some enjoyment. This is like I said, if you get a thousand people there Saturday against Telford. In a, in a step three game that's, that's what you want to be playing and I'd love to be playing Saturday nothing would nothing would make me happy than going to play in that sort of game we've got we've got, we've got nothing to lose we're not expected to win Saturday no one's expecting us to get anything Saturday I can live with that for as long I'll, 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 I'll be blowing that, that that buzzer believe me we are not going to win Saturday we're not going to get a point Saturday Telford are a good side They're going, they should be beating us with with the outform team we're banging that drum for all till that Saturday, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, in, a, in one way, yeah, of course that'd be nice. But in another way, it's the uh, it's the I'd have rather not had a team that are banging form like them who are third in the league. But what's there? What's there to lose? It's a, it's a bit of a no lose situation for me. So roll on. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Um, looking forward to a few of them. Few of them that are overly overly keen on me being there, uh, giving me some stick. That would be nice. And I'd like to see some of the old, the old face I've seen for a while. So looking forward to it. Shame you can't be there. Well, yeah, it's great to have you back. Marek will be there for full live commentary on HCFC Radio as well. So people can tune in and he'll be talking to you after, I'm sure. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Freddie. Thanks, mate.